Yeah. Hi, welcome to my UK Global Talent Visa webinar. It's my final inspirational webinar for 2023. What a year it has been. And um, to celebrate, I'm going to interview my latest client, Yasha Sweeney Paletti, today, and we'll go straight to um, interviewing her first. So, um, this is the uh, contents of the webinar. I will interview Yasha Sweeney you, you, and I'll try and interview her as quickly as possible so that we leave a bit of time if you've got some questions. And if you can put it in the chat, um, we may be able to get to it um, uh, if, if we have time. If not, I can answer the questions. And then after the interview, um, Yasha Sweeney will have to go, but I will stay on and continue with my webinar. I'll give you a bit of background about myself. I'll also talk about the Global Talent Visa and the Stage 1 application and process so you can hang around uh, please do because i i've got loads more information for you so um here we have yasha sweeney paletti from india who's recently received the endorsement the visa and she's got some uh, more news as well so um and i'll let her tell you so welcome yasha sweeney thank you so much for taking the time to join us and to tell us your story no, thank you so much for Mich uh, thank you so much Michelle for having me here and thank you everyone who's taken the time out of a very busy day to join us this this afternoon or evening or morning <laughs> wherever you're based out of. So thank you for taking the time to speak uh, to listen in on uh, listening on this webinar. Thank you. So um, I'm just going to delve straight in. Um, I know your background, but I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell people um, a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Yasha Swini and I, I hail from India. I started off my career as an expert application engineering in the field of semiconductors. So I worked uh, in a company called Infineon Technologies for five years as, as an engineer. And I was really focused on designing semiconductor ICs and launching these ICs for the automotive market in India. I did this for about five years and then I got an amazing opportunity to come to the UK to pursue my MBA from the Cambridge Judge Business School with a scholarship. So there was no looking back. I immediately put uh, my hands down to come, come to the UK. I finished my MBA uh, at the business school and then I got an opportunity to join Amazon in a commercial role and AWS. And for the last three years, I've been working with, uh, with Amazon slash AWS in a commercial role. Again, really thinking about the long-term strategy of how we acquire and grow our customer base. So this is uh, in a little bit of a nutshell introduction about me, but I'm sure I'll give you a little bit more context as I go through the journey yeah. uh, with you. That's amazing. And, I, and you know, the, a lot of people do have a both, you know, a technical and business background. Um, for you, it was technical first, then business, which, you know, I, I speak to a lot of people and that's how they get into the business. However, there are a lot of people who start with business and go technical. And um, you don't have to be one or the other. You can be both. And, and we structured your application that, uh, you know, to tell your story, which is what this is about. So, um Tell me, going back, what were your challenges and hesitations and, you know, in applying for the Global Talent Visa endorsement? And then how did you overcome those challenges? So I think I started thinking about applying for the GTV as early as Jan this year. But then uh, just going through the uh, the Tech Nation's website and going through the documentation and the process there felt very, very exhausting. It was a very long process. So I think that was the first hesitation that I had. The second one is just reading the requirement and the criteria makes it feel like the entire visa is very exclusive and sort of not meant for normal people, right? So I sort of immediately was intimidated by reading all of the criteria and the requirements they had and actually put off that thought. So uh, I, for a very long time, because I just assumed that it's something that's not for me and probably I wasn't as qualified uh, to be applying for this visa at that point of time. And the third one is just reading the criteria criteria felt like it was going to be a very, very long process. And at that point of time, I didn't know if I could take time out of my very busy schedule at work to actually dedicate time to making another visa application. So I think these were the three main reasons and the challenges and hesitations. So uh, I think the first thing that I did was obviously reach out, reach out to you. And I had my first session with you in January, where you sort of encouraged me and you said, you know, uh, Think about what you want to achieve out of this application. Don't don't stop the process. Just think about it. But I'd also like you to build a little bit more on a, your application. It's sort of not 100% there. So I think I'll pause there. I know you have a couple of more questions and the rest of the journey. But these, I think, were the three biggest concerns and hesitations I had 
earlier in the year when I considered applying for the GTB. Yeah, and then how did you overcome them? So I think the first one was uh, just getting in touch with you, right? So I think the minute I sat down with you and you broke down uh, what the process looked like, uh, I think it helped me get a little bit more clarity that uh, it was not it was not as exclusive as I thought. You had given me examples of other uh, people like me who had gotten this this uh, visa, so it f made me feel a lot more comfortable. The second one around uh, uh, the second one that was a very important and influencing factor was reaching out to people who were similar like me in my network. Right, I you see a lot of, on the news about people who are entrepreneurs or AI scientists who got the GTB and I obviously coming from a semiconductor background with commercial experience, wanted to see someone like me who had been successful in the process. So I think just reaching to reaching out to people with similar backgrounds as me helped me gain a lot more confidence that, you know, I was also capable of making a very strong application. And I think the third one, which is just taking time out of the work, I think the macroeconomic environment and the turbulence in the tech industry just really gave me that push that said, you know, this was a time when everything was going haywire in the industry. So in order to secure myself and feel more, um, again, secured about staying back in the UK, I just had to take a step forward and get started with it and give it all the time that it needed, because at that point, it was the most important thing. Yeah, so I think that, you know, one of the challenges, once you get over, you know, the initial hurdle of, you know, am I good enough to apply? Because I know, because I've been there. Um, and the next, the final challenge was the time, because it's such an overwhelming process. And it requires you to, you know, work on 15 documents. And, and to make them as, you know, um, convincing as possible that you deserve to be in the UK and that you meet the criteria. Um, I know you've done a lot of applications um, in the past, even, you know, with your um, application to do the MBA as well. It's very, it's, it's a time consuming process. I know it's not as daunting as this one. It's, it kind of still has it, but this requires 15 documents. It has all these experts and people to support you and about your work and everything. So it is, it is quite um, hard and challenging, but we, we got through it. You know, you made the time to do it um, and uh, you did it. Now, just going back, why did you apply for the visa? What, what, because you're already in the UK on a skilled worker visa. So what was the great thing about the Global Talent Visa for you? So I think there were two different reasons for why I applied for this visa. The first one, obviously, uh, a lot of people in the tech industry will uh, probably understand my situation. But I was working for Amazon at a time when there were a lot of discussions around layoffs and uh, layoffs in the tech industry. So I think the first reason I applied was from a place of insecurity that I didn't want to be dependent on an employer sponsoring me. So I, I wanted to sort of break free from that and have my own visa. So I had the independence to move around and work. But the second other reason, which a lot of people also tend to sort of ignore, is uh, the fact that the minute you are recognized as a talent by an endorsing body in the UK, it gives you a lot more credential and it gives you a lot more standing when you uh, attend tech conferences or tech events. And I think following along the line of my passion to be a women in business technology, women, women business leader in technology, I often stand at a lot of these events introducing myself and it feels a lot more nicer to introduce yourself as as exceptional talent being endorsed by someone else versus you just thinking that you're talent by yourself right yeah. so I think the second piece was also very very important for me that it gave me a stamp that I could use as I progress along this journey of my tech career yeah I, I agree and it's you know you are you, you're the same person as you were before you applied like you, you know you've still got the same credentials and achievements but having that stamp of approval does so much for your confidence as well like for me it was just like yes I what I'm doing is is good and it's accepted and I feel you know part of it so that's amazing that's really good and also I think another good thing is I don't know if we'll get to it but um it, it gives you a faster route to ILR um because yeah. yes you're on the skilled worker visa you've been there for three years and then you tell us what happened <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, I, obviously at the point of time when I was making the application, I had two routes, right? The exceptional talent and the exceptional promise. Except uh, I naturally felt fell under the requirements of the exceptional talent because I had about more than five years of experience. But I think the advantage of the exceptional talent gave me a fast track route to apply for my PR or the ILR in the UK because 
uh, the time that I sp I spent as a skilled on the skilled worker visa also counted towards uh, towards this. I didn't have to start afresh. So I think the timing fell in place really well because the minute I secured my GTV, uh, the global talent visa, I was immediately eligible to apply for my ILA. And I went ahead and did that and also secured my ILA. So this sort of really uh, fast <laughs> my entire journey of settling down in the UK. That's amazing. And, you know, a lot of people have to wait, but you just went straight, you know, straight yeah. to applying. Well, you had to do the global talent visa first and then the I ILA. But um, yeah. you've secured your ILA now. Yes, I did. Yeah, uh, just a couple of minutes <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Okay. We'll talk about the timing later. So um, yeah. let's talk about the criteria because there's five criteria and you have to select three, um, but one of them is mandatory. So if you want to just talk through the criteria you selected and just a little bit around what you submitted. So I, I selected two criteria from the optional criteria. Uh, the first one was innovation and the second one was impact. And both uh, through all the six documents, so three for innovation and three for impact, I really focused on my experience as an engineer building technical products, but also thinking about the commercial side of it and the impact it's had on the Indian automotive market, right? So I think what the strengths and obviously under your guidance, what really made my application strong was the ability to blend both together because... Uh, focusing completely on the technical sometimes does not deliver the right impact or the right uh, the right business results that you want to show the endorsing committee so i think just doing a blend of both really helped me uh, submit a well balanced application so it showed that i was an engineer i understood technology but it also showed that i was capable of interacting with customers understanding the business impact of some of the products that i designed and obviously now for the third one, which is the mandatory criteria of demonstrating leadership, I had to really think above and beyond my job. I know a lot of people just do uh, focus on uh, doing their job, but I think here again, one thing that you advise very strongly was to look outside my job and think about all the leadership um, examples that I've exhibited outside the job. And I think that's where some of the work I've been doing with the Women in Technology Mentoring Program and being a co-chair at the Technology SIG in the Cambridge Business School really helped bring about a lot of leadership skills that were outside of my workspace. And that is, I think, a very big differentiating factor because what the endorsing body is looking for is contributions you've made to the industry and not necessarily in your job. So I think a lot of the MC focused on my contributions to the broader industry more than my contributions to the job. Yeah. And you will continue to do that, won't you? Yes. I think <laughs> this is a subject that I'm very, very passionate about. So it, it is a new year resolution for 2024 on how I want to double down on mentoring more people and sort of really advising more people on how to pursue uh, careers in tech. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, this global talent visa endorsement is not just about, it's not just like a job application. Um, it's a global talent visa, exceptional talent or exceptional promise. So you have to look up and outside of your day-to-day -day job and you have to look at how you make a significant impact to the tech industry as a whole. Um, so this is something that a lot of people do struggle with. You know, I don't have any problems of you talking about your job because that's what you're paid to do. But it's that one step further. It's that leadership. It's not. It's thought leadership. It's being a role model. It's it's looking up and outside of your job. What value can you add to the industry as a whole? And that's something that we discussed at length. And there were certain examples that you didn't even think that you could um, submit as evidence. So I'm yeah. really glad we we teased that out and had a had a chat around that. Perfect. Now, um, someone uh, has asked about timing, <laughs> which we will. So okay, there's a lot to do with timing. The first bit of timing is the prep work and Yasha Sweeney and I worked for like I think eight weeks um, and it was quite an intense process um, because we have to you know work on the 15 documents um, once we prepare then we have to Yasha Sweeney then submitted okay and there's two um, stages there's the endorsement stage and then there's the home office visa stage if you are endorsed so Yasha Sweeney you're going to talk us through how long it took you um, to go from submission to endorsement to visa and then to ILR yeah Sure. So uh, I started, I think I finally made the decision of going ahead with uh, starting the process mid-July. And that's when I signed up for the first strategy session with you, where we spent uh, about a week really brainstorming on what my 15 pieces of evidence would be. 
again, just the raw structure or the skeleton of what these 15 pieces of document would be. And once that sort of finalized, it took me eight weeks to put all of those documents together, as well as the recommendations, right? So I think I started the process early uh, August, and it was only by late September that we had finished all the uh, all the documents. And then I still took an additional week's time to sort of fine tune everything, again, re-look at all the documents, because uh, a document that I worked on early in August, I had a very different perspective of it by the time I reached the end of the process in September. So I think I set aside one week where I uh, re-went through all of the documents, ensured they were in order, and finally launched my application on the 4th of October. Mm -hmm. And uh, after submitting it, uh, within three weeks, so on the 24th of October, I got a uh, I got the endorsement from Tech Nation. So once the endorsement was done, I was through the stage one of the GTV, and it was time for the stage two. Now, the stage two uh, requires setting up an appointment with the home office to go and give biometric appointments. And obviously, this is dependent on the availability of appointments itself. But there is a provision, obviously, to pay for priority to get an earlier appointment. So I didn't want to delay the process. So I secured an appointment on the November, on the October 28th. So within four days of getting my uh, GTV to secure, um, to secure an appointment. And after that, again, because it was a priority appointment, I got my visa finally in two working days. So by the October 30th, I had my global talent visa approved. And I think from then on, the journey progresses, obviously, because after securing the GTV, uh, I was also on the verge of finishing my three years within the UK. So it also enabled or basically opened the timeline for me to apply for my ILR application. So I think early November, I then started my application for the ILR and subsequently by the end of November, even that was approved. Uh, and I then got my PR uh, in the UK. So I think it all happened over a span of six long months. But yeah, it 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 happened quite quickly. That was quick. No, go back before you apply for your ILR. You had to do something else because to get it. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So one of the requirements of getting an ILR is obviously to complete a test which is known as the life in the UK test and the life in the UK test basically is a mechanism to help us immigrants feel more integrated into the culture so learning a lot about the culture the sports the history of the UK and it's a test that you have to take before the ILR so yes I crammed studying for that test in a week's time took the test and then <laughs> Uh, made my ILR application so yeah. that's amazing it took me a month because I I didn't think I could do it in a week like that's amazing Yashasvini so tell me about quickly about the test is it still 50 pounds to sit it yes uh, it's yeah. still 50 pounds to uh, okay. to sit it it has 24 questions you have to get 18 right so it's a 75 percent pass pass, you uh, pass the first time? yeah so <laughs> You can take the test as many times because obviously they want you to pass. But you, yeah, you can take the test as many times as you as you want. But um, you can actually do it now. Like you could have done it and then waited another two years before applying for ILR. Like it doesn't have, a, I don't think it has an expiry date, but obviously yeah. you do it right before. It, it just, why sit a test if you don't have to? So yeah. Oh, well done. So, you know, I feel like the approval to get the endorsement and the visa and the ILR, it was all shorter than the actual preparation. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I think the preparation took the longest time. It took two and a half months to get everything yeah. in order, but after that, everything fell in uh, line. That's brilliant. That's that's fantastic. I can't believe it. Um, I can believe it, but it's it's well done to you as well. You, you did it. I know it was six long months, but, you know, you did it and you you yeah. closed out the year with securing an ILR. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So now that you've been through the process, um, what advice do you have to give to people um in the, you know, it's fresh because you know, we we it, you did work on it an intense eight weeks. Um it's fresh in your mind. Um, what advice would you give to others now that you've gone through it? I think uh, three key pieces of advice, right? The first one is just get started because like I mentioned early on, uh, I had the first thought in January, but I actually procrastinated for nearly six months before starting the process in July. So I think it's as simple as just get started. It does feel overwhelming. You're going to rethink the decision multiple times, but I think once you get started, it feels a lot more comfortable going through the process. The second piece of advice is work with someone, right? It necessarily needn't be a consultant, but just work with someone who has been through the process because they unwrap it for you and they sort of guide you on what works and what doesn't work. So just having that 
pers different perspective of someone who's been through the process adds a lot more value to your application than you'd believe. I know uh, in the beginning, I was like, no, I think I can do it on my own. I uh, spoke to uh, friends. They told me what needs to be done. But I think just having someone through the entire process made the entire process feel less overwhelming than it should actually be. Because most of the times you're balancing back with this. So it's, it's uh, naturally an overwhelming process. And I think the third and the key one is no achievement is small. I think one of the exercises that we did that really helped me was literally write down every single achievement, be it small or big, because at the end of the day, it always found a place in the application. It's 15 long documents. Often you would find yourself running out of content. So at, the, at that point of time, these small uh, achievements also help because then they can be plugged in when you're really struggling to, to sort of prove um, more along the uh, criteria. So I think these are the three key pieces of advice I'd have for, for oh. people who are getting started on this journey. Yeah, and that's really important. And, you know, the fact that you're, you're now a role model, that's really important because you you looked for people to talk to and, you know, and, and now you know the importance of um, the journey that you've been on. Um, and that's how I started as well. I started this journey in 20. 16 that was when the visa was brand new and I didn't have anyone to ask no one had gone through that process so we were kind of just fumbling our way through it um and when I got it I wrote a blog about my journey and that's how it led to me doing all this because so many people contacted me and you know everyone who get who gets endorsed through my help it brings me back to when I was endorsed and I had no one to share it with because I didn't know anyone at the time. So I love sharing the good news with my clients because I know how it feels. No one knows um, the intense process and the journey that one goes through unless they've been through it themselves. You know, yep. you wouldn't want to do it again. <laughs> I just don't, I never want to do it again. <laughs> But I think one thing that did stand out from the entire process of doing this was a very, very good reflection of eight years, right? So it helped me reflect so much on the eight years that it actually gave me clarity on what I want to do going forwards because the process is so grueling, it makes you think deep and hard. So I think it was a very good exercise that I'd been postponing for some time. So uh, I probably would do it again. If, if it <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you in ten years <laughs> or five years. <laughs> Happy to because um yeah I love I love that I love being able to reflect with people in the last five to ten years of their career because you ne you're never forced to do that and I think it's a really good exercise to do um because you know you do go through these journeys evolution of your personal career. Um, development you know where are you going to be in five years you know you do have a plan you've you've written down your future plans in order to get the endorsement but in the next five years you know I'd like I would like to chat to you in, in five years time to see um you know where where to next um and that is really exciting um we we are actually on time which I'm so pleased about yeah. and thank you so much for being so good about your answers you're very clear and concise and I think everyone can see that you know your answers here clear and concise is it was reflected in your application it was well structured it was very clear you listed your achievements and you know, you were able to tell your story um, in 45 pages. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now, I'm just going to take it to the floor um, to see if anyone has any questions. Um, someone's asking if you submitted with dependents. Um, I submitted on my own. Um, Yasha Sweeney, did you submit? Even I submitted on my own. Yeah. I didn't submit. I submitted it on my own. Yeah, so there is an option that you can bring your dependents with you, um, your spouse or um, children under 18. So um, once you get the endorsement, um, then you can apply uh, for the visa for your you and your family. So that's that's um, um, OK. Now I'm just looking at any other questions. OK, uh, people would I like to also yeah. if you hang if you hang around, I will talk to you more about um, the process um, just quickly. Does a visa check's intention to stay in the UK? Um, yeah, the purpose of the visa is for you to live and work in the UK. Um, what's your exciting plans, Yasha Sweeney, after this? Well, you're, you're back home for I, the UK. Yeah, I, I'm back home for the holiday, but I think going into New Year, it is sort of building on this, right? Like I said, my passion was always sort of being in a, a women business leader in tech, but also contributing and giving back to the uh, 
to the industry. So I have a couple of new mentoring programs that I'm on that I've just signed up for uh, in the last couple of months. So really looking forward to uh, doing all of those in 2024, while obviously I continue building my career in the UK uh, in tech. That's exciting. I'm really pleased for you. If you've, if anyone's got any more questions, please do put them down. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let Yasha Sweeney go because she's got a hard stop and she's got another meeting to, to dash off to. So I really want to thank you so much, Yasha Sweeney. I'm delighted for you, really am. And I really enjoyed working with you. I am going to miss you, but I know that we'll keep in touch and you let me know yeah. how you're getting on and have a lovely yeah. time with your family and safe travels uh, and coming back into the UK as um, a permanent resident. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you for the time and support through everything. Yeah, Bye. see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, so I'm going to continue my webinar while um, Yasha Sweeney is off. So um, thank you so much for um, sticking around. Um, I know that there's lots of questions. Um, I might answer the questions now if that's okay. Um, someone's asked that um, even though you've got strong references and you've got products built, um, it depends on the criteria you select because um, innovation requires some examples of innovation. You do have to provide some examples of the impact of your innovation, um, but unless you're selecting the actual impact criteria, you don't need to focus too much on that because you haven't selected that criteria. But you do have to show some kind of achievement, traction, maybe product launch, or some meaningful impact that you've made to the company that you've worked for. So you would you would have to tell some kind of story to round off, you know, what was the purpose? Why did you do what you did? And what was the outcome? Um, so you might have a chance. It depends on on what the what the outcome is. Um, yeah, so you, you've been asked. Yeah, so there is a risk to every application. It depends on the story that you want to tell and what actually happened to tell that story in the best way. Um, anyone with more than five years experience or less than five years experience is um, eligible, provided you meet the criteria, provided you are, you know, eligible if you want to just confirm if you if you are eligible please complete my eligibility questionnaire but what i might do is i'm going to um possibly um sorry there's one more question then i'm going to go to my webinar um okay so yeah the the question that i had was um if you're not working for a tech company are you still eligible um you are you may be eligible but you may not be able to meet the criteria because the criteria requires you to um, provide examples of you working for product-led digital technology companies. So the eligibility is that you may not currently work for a product-led digital technology company, um, which, you know, you can still be eligible. But however, in the past, you must have worked for a product-led digital technology because the criteria requires you to provide evidence of you um, building products or selling those products for those companies. So I'm just going to go to um, my webinar now, if that's okay. Um, uh, and please do ask any questions um, and I'll answer them at the end after I've explained um, the global talent visa process. But just a little bit about myself and thank you so much for coming. I know it's Christmas and everyone is really busy um, winding down, but something to think about over the Christmas holidays. Um, my name is Michelle. I'm Vietnamese, Australian, and I'm also a British citizen. Um, I'm a global talent visa coach. Um, oh. And this is, okay, here we go. Um, and in 2016, I was um, endorsed with exceptional talent. And um, after my endorsement, I became the Tech Nation Visa Ambassador. And the reason is because back then when I applied um, and when a lot of people applied, there weren't many people who knew about the visa. So what they did was they needed people to be ambassadors and um, to tell their story. And I was one of them. And I did that for two years. Um, that's what led me to becoming a um, global talent visa coach because I I was getting bombarded with so many questions and I was helping so many people that this then ended up becoming my full-time job, which I absolutely love. Um, the great thing about the visa is it does give you indefinite leave to remain, which is the PR and citizenship. So um, in 2019, I applied for indefinite leave to remain and then I became a British citizen. Um, I spent seven years in the UK. I based myself in Manchester, London and Newcastle. And before I became an entrepreneur, I was um, an Australian solicitor and tech entrepreneur. 
Um, I then started my blog about my story um, and I've coached so many people since I started this journey, um, tech entrepreneurs, senior execs and tech employees. My success rate is 90%. So some of my clients have received their results within three to 27 hours. As you heard, Yasha Sweeney had to wait three weeks. The average period is three to three to four weeks. But um, some of my clients have been very lucky and they've had um, results very, very quickly. Um, it really just does depend on the workload of the assessors. Now, some of my clients have included people from all different companies, um, big companies, um, startups, and then I've helped, you know, individual game designers, UX designers, CTOs, CEOs, um, cybersecurity, you know, the list goes on and on. And this is why I love doing what I do. It's because even if people have the same title and role, their story is different. Everyone's story is unique. And, and I really do enjoy working with, you know, people from all over the world, having so many different roles um, and working for different companies. Um, we talked about the leadership criteria with Yasha Sweeney, and these are the types of things that Tech Nation are looking for. It's public facing thought leadership stuff, um, as well as maybe mentoring, but it has to be part of a structured mentoring program. Um, I've been interviewed, I've been um, um, quoted uh, in books. And so these are the types of things I've been a judge at hackathons. Um, so, you know, I've been able to tell my story, but I've been also able to um, um, talk about the trends in the industry and my expertise back then I'm, I'm not doing it now was um, I was an expert in the wearable tech industry um, because I was building my own wearable tech product at the time so I was out there talking about um, wearable tech um, IoT and that's how I uh, built my thought leadership and my evidence around that. Um, on my website, there will be my story about my blog. So you can have a look at that and you can have a read about it. And that's the blog that went viral. And I'm really proud of it because it, it led me to where I am today. But all I was doing was sharing my story and it resonated with a lot of people. And this is, um, is what the Global Talent Visa endorsement process is about. It is about sharing your story and telling it in a way that um, meets the criteria, but also talks about all your achievements um, in the digital technology um, industry. And then talk about where you're headed. What are you going to do in the UK? Um, and that's something that everyone should really do anyway. But I know the visa is the impetus for people to actually do it. Um, but it's a really good journey to um, to go on. Um, these are some of my successful clients from the big companies, from startups. You can see I help people from all over the world, from Egypt, India, Nigeria, US, um, Pakistan, um, um, Serbia, um, yeah, so it's it, there's a whole range of people that I help and I really do love it. Um, so you may have heard um, and there may have been more um, rumors or anything about Tech Nation um, closing down, but it, it it was announced that it was closing in March, but um, luckily Founders Forum have um, taken over Tech Nation and um, it, it was okay. So um, Tech Nation, the Global Talent Visa still remains open until further notice. So just continue to apply as normal. Um, they've just been acquired by the Founders Forum Group, but everything else has, is just the same. And yes, it was tricky um, to navigate in March when people didn't know, but Tech Nation have always maintained that it is, was always still open as usual. And I've, I've been helping even more people now and I'm getting even more busy. So please do, don't worry about, you know, any anyone in Tech Nation closing down at the moment, it still proceed as normal. So the Global Talent Visa, as you heard, it's a special visa that um, allows highly skilled tech entrepreneurs as well as talents or employees working for tech companies um, the ability to apply for the right to live in the UK for five years. It's a two-stage process. You've got to be endorsed by Tech Nation because this is the tech visa. Um, and then once you meet the strict criteria, Tech Nation will endorse you and then you can apply for the visa. It's more than a job application and um, the hashtag Tech Nation Visa is for um, the visa visa in digital technologies if you there are other um, visas as well in terms of in, sorry other endorsing bodies so the global talent visa is umbrella digital technology is one of the endorsing bodies tech nation is one of the endorsing bodies for digital tech there's also fashion architecture science engineering they have different endorsing bodies but the global talent visa is the umbrella and i'm only focusing on the digital tech the tech nation visa um, it gives you the freedom and flexibility to live and work in the UK for five years. Um, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain and then British citizenship. Um, you can switch from tier two, the skilled worker, 
um, to the global talent and time spent in the UK counts, as we saw with Yasha Sweeney. For me, I was on an entrepreneur's visa, which is not available um, now, but back then I was on an entrepreneur's visa and I was able to switch to the global talent and my time under the entrepreneur's visa at the time counted, so I was able to switch as well and my time did count. You can bring your dependents with you. You can register a UK limited company as well. So a lot of people who are on student visas, which I help, and they want to start, start their own startups, their current student visa didn't allow them to do that. But when they switched, they were allowed to start um, their own UK limited company. You can also work for a tech company without the need for a company sponsorship. And this is why Yasha Sweeney did it. Um, she wanted the freedom and flexibility, even though she was still working for a company. She just wanted that security that this is her own visa. She's not relying on anyone, especially with redundancies happening at the moment. It's attached to you. And it is cost effective in that the stage one endorsement application fee is only in the hundreds. Um, it's cost effective. And if you don't get it, you can apply again. You still have to pay that fee but at least it's not thousands and thousands. It's only in the hundreds. It's only when you get to stage two, it's when it is a little bit more expensive, but that's, but you know that you, you hopefully, you, you know, you'd secure the visa then. So, and the fee is, is the immigration health surcharge. That's the most expensive fee. Um, so I have, you know, lots of people from different countries apply for the global talent. There's 90 plus um, countries. Um, there's a 54% endorsement rate. As I said, my success rate is 90%, but, you know, the endorsement rate is about one in two that don't get it um, for whatever reason. You know, they may not fit the criteria. Um, they've worked on the application on their own. They, they, you know, there are lots of reasons why, and every um, case is different. It's, it's judged on its own merits and each assessor is different as well. There's been loads of successful recipients um, over the years. Um, you can apply for talent or promise. The stats are 60% get talent and 32% get promise. But, you know, these are just stats. They don't mean anything. If you if you have more than five years, you should apply for talent. If you have less than five years, you should apply for promise. But there's just the stats. Again, men and women, there's more men in tech, um, 75, 25. But um, this is why I advocate for women in tech, because there should be more, um, because you can see the stats is less women in tech. Um, once you get the um, endorsement and the visa, you can apply to um, be um, to join the alumni, which I'm a part of, and hopefully Yashi Sweeney as well. It's everyone who got the Global Talent Visa digital tech, um, there is a um, an alumni that we can join and there's a Slack channel um, where they host events and, um, you know, meet other people who received the exceptional talent or promise endorsement. So just a few stats here. Over the years, you can see that the applications for um, Tech Nation have increased over the years. Um, these are just applications, not endorsements. We know that the endorsement rate is about 54%. And um, back when I applied, 2016, not really many stats, but you can see over the years they've increased. COVID um, increased it a lot as well. Um, and also since Tech Nation made the announcement, there were so many people applying. Um, and you know, it was it was crazy at the time. Like um, people were waiting up to eight weeks for their decisions, which it can take up to eight weeks. Uh, average is three to four weeks. Now it's kind of slowed down a little bit, but still. You can see now, you know, just in November, um, it starts in April every year for the stats to, to tick over. So since April to November, there have been 1,800 applications. But if you can have a look over here, for the whole year, there have been 1,350 in 2021. So, you know, they're already way up when there's still like a good five months to go. So they may surpass last year's um, um, figures. So that's just stats for you to see. Um, so you can see here, these are um, old stats in 2020. I can't get new ones just yet. Um, these are endorsement rates per country. And it's interesting because I do help a lot of people from the countries with a lower endorsement rate. Um, and as I said, my endorsement rate is 90%. So I give you a better chance. I can't guarantee endorsement, but I give you a strong application to help you get the endorsement. Um, and then over here, um, these are some of the, the, the roles that um, have a higher endorsement rate, but, but that's just these, again, please don't be put off by these stats, software engineers, because it's technical tech visa, but, you know, straight right behind it, biz dev, you know, marketing, product managers, um, UX designers, they're still in there. It's just not as many. Um, so Someone asked me about um, working for tech companies and um, whether or not they're eligible. The guidelines provide that you can, you are eligible if you don't, even if you don't work for a tech company, if you are 
if you have a technical background, okay? But if you have a business background, you must be working for a technical company. Now, the, the guidelines also provide that even if you are or aren't, or even if you are eligible, you have to also meet the criteria to provide examples of when you were working for product-led digital technology companies. The criteria is very clear about this. You have to show examples of when you were working for product-led digital technology companies. So these companies are defined as businesses that actually provide a proprietary digital technical service product platform hardware as their primary revenue source. So they will have had to have built some products or services or platforms to license or sell to their customers. They can't be working as an outsourcer that develops these products and then give it to their customers to then on sell. No outsourcing or consultancies. They have to be companies that develop their own products for customers, either license, subscription or selling. Okay. Then you need to provide um, 15 documents and those 15 documents consist of your CV, personal statement and three letters of recommendations by experts. So that's five documents here. That's general. Everyone has to do this. But then you have to pick um, the criteria and that makes up your 10 documents. And we'll go through that in a second. And each document bar the CV needs can be up to three pages. The CV, sorry, the personal statement is um, 1,000 words and that's about two pages. So everything else should be about three pages. That's why I said it's about 45 pages. 15 documents, three pages each, about 45 pages. So for your eligibility, you can um, have a technical or business skill. OK, um, as you can see, there's this this is a big list. It's not exhaustive. So if you kind of fit within um, those examples, then then you could be eligible um, to apply. Now, these specialisms are definitely not eligible. And, you know, they've specifically mentioned consultants or outsourcers. Definitely not. Um, if you are a junior investor, no, you should be a senior investor if you want to apply. And anyone who has a business skill, again, you shouldn't be working for agencies. They don't want any consultants, outsourcers, agencies. They want you to be working in-house for a product-led digital technology company. And, and as Yasha Swinney said, she wasn't sure if she, you know, she would be eligible because she's an employee um, and not a founder, but that's okay. Employees or founders can apply. In fact, a lot of people think this is a, a an entrepreneur's visa, but it's not. Um, the stats show that 75, 25 um, are in favor of those who are employees over founders who um, apply. Um, so don't be put off by, by you know, thinking that you have to be a founder. You definitely don't. I mean, you could be working for a tech company, but then your future plans are you want to be a startup founder. That's OK, because they do ask you what your future plans in the UK are. But your example should be from the last five years of when you were working for product led digital technology companies. So we talked about um, different um, categories in which you can apply. If you have more than five years, you should apply for under talent. Um, and that's when you're later in your career. And the great thing about applying for talent is within three years, you can apply for indefinite leave to remain. However, if you've got less than five years, you can apply for the promise. And that just means that you're earlier on in your career, but yeah, and you have to wait for five years that living in the UK before you can apply for the indefinite leave to remain. So the difference is in two years. So these are the different criteria um, once you submit, you know, your five documents for the CV, personal statement and three letters of recommendations. Your next 10 documents need to make up um, fulfilling the criteria. So you've got mandatory, which you have to pick, and that's you have to show leadership. OK, and because you've got 10 documents to provide, a minimum of three documents per criteria should be submitted, but that only takes you up to nine documents, which means the 10th document should be a criteria that you've already selected, hopefully the one that you're stronger in, so that you submit four documents under the stronger criteria, three and then three for the remaining two criteria. So let's look at the optional criteria. You only have to select two out of four the first one is innovation. So depending on whether you're selecting talent or promise, there's a little bit of a difference here. If you want to select innovation under talent, you must show that you have a proven track record of innovation. However, if you are going under promise, you just need to show examples of innovation. So that's a little bit less of a um, requirement. The benchmark is lower under promise. And be careful because a lot of people think, I've got more than five years experience, but I want to go under to promise. No, if you've got more than five years experience, you should be going under talent. 
um, because the assessor can see that you're trying to go under a lesser and they may not endorse you at all. They may assess you under talent, even though you've applied on the promise. If you've got like a load of experience, but you're just trying to circumvent um, the process. Bearing in mind, they do have discretion as well. So it really does make it really tricky. But as a point, as a rule of thumb, if you've got more than five years experience, go for talent. The second criteria is um, volunteer work that advances this tech sector. So have a look at, you know, it's proof of recognition for work outside of your immediate occupation that advances the tech sector. So it is volunteer work, things that you do outside of your day to day um, and that you, you're adding value to the community. And you need at least three examples of this. The third optional criteria is showing any commercial, technical or entrepreneurial impact. OK, so these are your significant contributions to the tech sector. Okay, and the contributions to the tech sector can be contributions and impact to the company that you work for, to the field or to the industry or to the customer. So you can show impact that way and you need three documents for that. Or you can then show academic contributions and a lot, a lot of people choose this criteria. I did because I worked with a university in building my product and that helped them with their academic um, research papers um, and really, um, you know, put a map on, on their um, expertise by working with me as an entrepreneur. But not, not many people choose that criteria. So the one, the two criteria that a lot of people choose are one, innovation, and number three, impact, and then they have to choose leadership. So that's the three out of the five criteria. So um, once you um, have all your documents in place, this is how you would apply. I only deal with stage one endorsements, okay? Um, stage two is a home office visa application and that's a legal step which immigration lawyers can help you, otherwise you can do it yourself. But within stage one endorsement, there's two steps, okay? Logistically, you have to pay and register online at the home office, that's step one. Once you pay and register at online, and it's £524, remember I said it was only in the hundreds, it used to be 456, now it's 524, you've got 15 working days to then go over to the Tech Nation portal and upload all your documents, your 15 documents. It's very easy. When I applied, it was snail mail. I had to print everything out and send it to Sheffield in a massive pack. And uh, yeah, that's how I did it. But now it's all online in the portal. Tech Nation is the only endorsing body that accepts um, um, uh, documents online um, in a proper portal, whereas the other ones, you have to email it. So um, you have to upload your documents. The average is three to four weeks. So Tech Nation, it goes to a Tech Nation assessor and they will assess and they have up to eight weeks, but the average is three to four weeks. It's the home office that then contacts you okay, to say whether or not Tech Nation have endorsed you, okay. If you are endorsed, perfect, they say, yes, you are endorsed, you meet the criteria, you go to stage two, which is your visa home office application stage, and then you complete the process there. It's 192, you've got your biometrics, and then the immigration health surcharge. That's increasing on the 16th of January, it's now 624, but it's going to increase to 1,035 per year. So if you are on a three-year visa, it's 1,035 times three, um, which is the talent. Or if you're on promise, it's 1,035 times five, and that will kick in on the 16th of January. But if you're looking at applying for stage two now, you, you pay 624 per year. When I applied, it was very cheap. It was 200, so um, it, it's, it's increased a lot since then. Now, if you are unsuccessful, you can appeal. There is no fee to appeal, but you have 28 calendar days to um, ask the assessor to look at your application again. And the only way you can appeal is if, if the assessor made a mistake, okay? Not because you didn't like the decision, but that the assessor didn't look at the application properly and that, you, that depending on what their feedback is, um, they they didn't um, take into consideration the evidence that you have presented to meet the criteria. Um, so they're the only reason for appeal. You cannot add new evidence in in the appeal. So which is why doing it the first time, um, you should put all your heart and soul and get a lot of help the first time around. Because once if you are unsuccessful, it's a lot harder to pass on the appeal unless the assessor made a glaringly obviously mistake to for another assessor to overturn that decision um for me this is why I help people the first time um a lot because I know what the appeal process is and it, it is it is hard challenging takes 
more time than necessary. If you want to do it, try and do it properly the first time so you don't have to worry about the appeal and, and all the rest of it. Okay. Um, so I do help a lot of people. I know this is an overwhelming process. I've been through it myself and I did it myself. Um, and I had so many questions, but no one could really help me um, with it. So I help with how do you present your evidence? What relevant information? Who can be your experts? How do you show your innovations and impact? How do you show you're an exceptional leader? Um, how much experience do you need? And, and and I help with appeals as well, unfortunately, but I, I do help. And sometimes I do, uh, I am able to overturn the decision. Um, I've done this since 2016. So I know what the assessors are looking for. I see feedback on a regular basis. Um, and I know what it takes to get a successful application in. Um, so I do have a website. If you want to go on there, if you want me to check your eligibility, you can fill in my eligibility questionnaire. I've got loads of content on my website, so feel free to have a look. Um, and I've been building this website for, you know, since probably 2016 when I started doing this. It's got blogs and all sorts of things in there. So hopefully it'll provide you with a lot more content, easy to read, and hopefully I'll break it right down for you. Um, I do have lots of different packages of support available if you need my support, um, starting with this, my membership area. Um, it's you know full of my templates, lots of explainer videos going through each criteria because I know it's overwhelming. Um, I focus a little bit on leadership, innovation, impact, um, how to structure your documents and evidence, um, but it's very general. But if you want more tailored support, um, a lot of people opt for my strategy session, okay, because it is a you know, full support at the very beginning to really tease out um, what your application could look like. I look at your past five to ten, five to seven years of your career to help you build that story. My strategy session includes access to my membership area anyway. Um, so, um, and it gives you my support for two and a half hours. We go through and we make a um, a plan of what your application would look like, who your experts are going to be, um, what criteria you're going to select and what documents against each criteria you're going to submit. Okay. And then you'll step back and go, right, okay, now I have a plan of attack. I can either do it myself or I can get more support from Michelle, which is my review package. Or you can go for my premium bespoke one-to-one -one package where I provide full support for eight weeks. Um, and that's what Yasha Sweeney um, took on. We had regular meetings each week for eight weeks and we worked on her documents, um, two documents per week for eight weeks. And she got my full support right from the get-go from the strategy session all the way through to submission um, and that's my most um, popular package the review package is there as well but that's only part support so I help you halfway I review your documents as if I'm the assessor and I make comments and help you fill in the gaps if I can see there's lots of gaps but you do the bulk of the work yourself but I offer you part support um, and then I also help with appeals as well so Having done this as an applicant and as a coach for over, you know, a thousand entrepreneurs and talent over the years, my top tips are this is your chance to tell your unique story. Okay, everyone has a story and it's just waiting to be told. Um, your tech network is also very important because this provide this process requires you to reach out to your network to help you write your letters of support and um, recommendations, and they will um, talk about your achievements and what impact and innovations you've made. This process is also about self promotion. Okay, if not, if you can't promote yourself, who else is going to do it? No one else is going to do it. You need to do it, and this is why a lot of people ask me for help because it's so awkward to promote yourself but if someone else like me can come in with fresh eyes as someone who can really talk to your achievements and make your um, documents and your content even more interesting um, of course what you do is amazing but there are ways in which you can um, word and craft things to showcase what you did because it, it was you're you're probably immune to it you know this is my job I do it every day but you know we need to convince the assessor that this is why your job is important. This is why you're doing what you're doing. This is the impact that you've made um, to the industry and to the company that you're working for. Um, again, being eligible is one thing. Meeting the criteria requires a whole strategy and putting together all 15 documents in place. I've helped people who've applied once and they didn't really understand the level of detail and how much work needs to be put in. They come back with an unsuccessful decision and I look at it and I'm like, there's no point appealing. 
let's start from scratch. And then we go through the whole process again and they can see the difference between what they submitted and what we submitted together, um, completely different application. And they, that's when they realize, wow, it, it really does require a lot of time and effort, but it's worth it to get visa. Um, also contact me sooner rather than later if you need support, because um, I would rather help you before you submit, because then it's not too late. Once you've submitted, you've spent a lot of time, energy, money, um, in doing it and 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 not getting it so i know there's a risk there's a risk to every application what i do is i minimize that risk of getting an unsuccessful result because it's time you can't get that time back um, and a lot of the time it's mindset once you've been unsuccessful the first time your mindset's a bit different so i try to help people the first time um so that they can get it and move on look yasha sweeney six months She's gone. She's not coming back. <laughs> Maybe she will in five years when we do the, the refresh of the um, reflecting on her last five years in the UK. But she's ready to start her life in the UK on a global, well, she's a permanent resident now. So she's she's going to be flying. Um, so they're my top tips. Um, it's from my years of experience. Um, and I hope that you've gained a lot from my tips and also Yasha Sweeney's tips as well. I have a YouTube channel, which this webinar is going to go on to as well. I've got the website and emails. Um, you can email me on techthese at michellehewer.co.uk. But if you want me to check your eligibility, please do. Um, I'll send you to my eligibility questionnaire anyway. So even if you do email me, if you haven't done the eligibility um, questionnaire, then I'll, I'll direct you to that. Um, so I hope that has helped um, with any of your questions you have. Um, and thank you so much for coming. If you've got any other questions, please put it down um, and I can answer them in the next three minutes that we have. Um, and I'm so pleased that you came and I really do hope that you can think about this over the Christmas break and we can catch up in the new year because I am taking from next week off. Um, it's been a crazy year this year and I really do hope that um, you do think about this because this is about your not only your professional career, but it's about your, your whole life. Um, and it does, this visa does make a huge difference and it, ha it had done to me. Uh, it ended my immigration journey by getting this visa because I didn't have to rely on anyone. It was security that I really needed to, con to continue to live and work in the UK. Um, so if you have any other questions or anything, please do ask on the chat or on the q and I'm here for another two minutes um, and I can see some people still here, but if you've got no questions, I might leave it. <laughs> um, might just wait one more minute. Um, just checking through the, the questions that I've answered them all. Um, one last little tip is um, think about your, your external leadership. Okay, I've got a leadership course coming out next year um, because I noticed that a lot of people do um, lack on um, some leadership type examples. I know, as I said, I have no issue with people um, providing examples for the work that they've done because they're getting paid to do the job that they do. But this process is about more than a job. It's about your thought leadership in your space. It's about promoting yourself as a thought leader. It's about how you make impact to the tech industry. Okay, so have a think of the types of things. It's in my eligibility questionnaire, actually, if you want to click on that, there's lots of examples of leadership. Um, and I'm going to tease that out a little bit more in my leadership course that I'm going to be launching next year. Um, and think about, you know, the things that um, you can contribute to, to your own tech communities, because those things do matter. As Yasha Sweeney said, no achievement is small, so long as it relates to the um, digital technology industry. Um, please do think about that. There is some kind, a few guidelines, um, criteria around that, and we can discuss that and I'll go through that in my leadership course next year. But now I'm going to leave it and I really do hope this has helped you and I hope you have happy holidays, um, have some great downtime with your family and friends and hopefully I'll see you next year. Thank you so much for coming. Bye.